Yves Tanguy, Master of Surrealism. Before learning about Yves Tanguy, it is important to understand the art form in which he was so prolific in. This art style was known as Surrealism. Now what is Surrealism? It is a 20th century avant-garde movement in art that sought to release the creative potential of the unconscious mind. Major formal characteristics include a rational juxtaposition of images, the exploration of dream as a form of reality, crossing the boundaries of socially acceptable behaviors, and an emphasis on the aspects of what is strange. When viewing surrealism, its intentions are to make you feel a little uncomfortable, and this style revolves around exploring the unconscious and bringing it to life. It's not something you see every day, and it's definitely not anything we're familiar with. A quote from Andre Breton describes surrealism as a mean of reuniting conscious and unconscious realms of experience so completely that the world of dream and fantasy would be joined to the everyday rational world. Its origins derive from the Dada movement prior to World War I, which also produced images of anti-art and didn't hold much reason. As you can see below, these are very abstract types of work that could raise many questions, especially as they were the first of their kind. Now that we have a better understanding of what surrealism is, we can further discuss how Yves Tanguy came about his line of work and analyze some of his most famous pieces. Yves Tanguy was born in Paris, France in 1900, and only eight years later, his father died and his mother went back to her home country, leaving him to grow up with various relatives. He was eventually drafted to the army where he revended French poet and screenwriter Jacques Prévert. Upon returning from the army and gaining some exposure from his newfound friend, Yves was riding a bus when he spotted two paintings by painter Giorgio de Chirico in a dealer's window. He then proceeded to hop off the bus due to his pure gasp of admiration and further examined the works. This cemented his desire to be a painter despite any sense of prior experience. He later joined a surrealist group after discovering their advertisement within a bookstore in Paris. As you can tell from the pictures of him on the right, he was a rather strange character who fully enjoyed expressing himself in ways he deemed pure. This sort of characteristic is clearly evident within his works as well. These are some of his works that he was inspired by from various artists such as Max Ernst and De Chirico and Andre Masson. And after viewing these works, he developed his own personal style of surrealism, which is what he's known for of today. These are the types of artworks he was exposed to that influenced his decision, and as you can see, they are rather odd, combining some familiar objects with those of pure fiction. This is his art piece called Papa is Wounded in 1927, one of his earliest and most recognizable pieces. Soon after joining the Surrealists, he began applying the principles of automatism to his paintings. Automatism is something that involves creating spontaneous associations with no preconceived ideas. The Surrealists believed that this technique could be used to express the workings of the unconscious mind and bring it to its purest form. Tangi painted timeless, dreamlike landscapes, but his forms were completely invented with no reference to reality. This is clearly evident in some of the works now. In this piece, it's items that aren't any human-like or anything that we know of today in our everyday world, yet you can kind of get a sense that they're sentient and looking upon one another. He was very good at having this sense of space to his work, these vast lands, just open areas, and he made sure to not use colors that pop, left bland colors in with different shades to really have that sense of darkness. It, repetitive in his works are these thin, thin white lines who have no sense of meaning, and none of his works are very straightforward, but I guess that's really what made his surrealist art so surreal and of the purest form. In his next art piece, Multiplication of the Arcs, 1954, during his ending years, he has another painting that has a one perspective right in the middle of the line of the horizon. It can be a, a depiction of a graveyard of bones. It can be an eagle eye view of a civilization. But the thing is, 
He always has his own unconscious idea of shapes and senses. It's never supposed to be familiar to the viewer, and he does great every time. It's all about when the viewer just makes their own anecdote about what he's trying to say, and that's why it really emphasizes that these aren't conscious behaviors. He was very much so letting this be a part of his work, and still kept the bland colors with hues of blue to keep that kind of calmness to it, but at the same time keeping it dark. Again, you can see the vast space in the background and just goes on and on. It seems like an eternity with a very, very, very drab sky. In his third artwork that we're going to be analyzing slowly towards to the north, we have a very, very, very big contrast in colors compared to the previous two. This art piece is extremely dark, but you still have that repetitive sense of space. The lines are, are evident again, thin, but with no sense of meaning. But you can't help but take these abstract images that have no sense of anything that we know, but still kind of piece them together that they're a part of a whole. And you see this sense of motion in this work as if they're traveling left to right. It's odd how he does it, but it's very, very intriguing that he, at the end he always accomplishes his goal and what he wants. Yves Tangu is so good at his art and so pronounced that he influenced other great artists, such as this one known as Roberto Mata, who lived a long year, a long life of 91 years and dedicated most of it to art. As you can see in these works, they are very, very surreal in which they are not familiar to anything that we know and are just odd and always have this sense of unfamiliarity and make you feel out of out of position and very strange, sort of uncomfortable in a sense. In the artwork that we'll be analyzing, The Mirror of Kronos, one of his most famous pieces, an oil on canvas in series Thormata, you, also, you have that sense of blue again and the thin white lines also evident in his works. I believe he picked this up from Yves Tangi and then brought together these mythical creatures that are made up of his own imagination. Just something that he let his hand draw without ever thinking about it and it just has this sense of somewhere you don't want to be It's very, very odd, but it's very, very, very familiar to Yves Tangi's work. He really hit the nail on the head on his inspiration. And if you look all around, they all seem to have this sense of direction from right to left, and that they all have a fixed focus. It's very, very well done. And it's clear that Yves Tangi did have a part of this even though it was indirect. That is Surrealism and Yves Tanguy and his impact on the art world. Thank you.